In this tutorial, we're going to learn to knit this Mobius basket weave cowl. And if you'd like your own free copy of the pattern to follow along, you can click the link in the video description just below the video. That'll take you to my website where you can download the pattern for yourself. Now, if you are uh, not familiar with a Mobius, it is a ring with a half twist in it. And essentially that makes it a one-sided shape with only one outside edge. And you can Google Mobius strip if you want the full mathematical explanation. But in knitting, it's very cool because this half twist gives us this unique drape and way of wearing it that we couldn't get out of just a normal ring. Um, the half twist is something that we seam into it, which is my next point. In this tutorial, we are not going to do a Mobius cast on. And I'll tell you why, it's because I don't like it. <laughs> and knitting is supposed to be fun, right? I, um, in designing this pattern, I tried every kind of Mobius cast on out there. I even reverse engineered, engineered it and designed my own, and I still didn't like it. I tried to break it down to its most basic elements and make it easier. It's, uh, to do a normal Mobius cast on, you have to double twist a, a, a circular needle and, it wasn't fun, and so instead of doing the Mobius cast on, we knit this as a big flat piece and then seam it together with the half twist in it, which is much friendlier. It's also more appropriate for beginners because of that. Now, um, I wanna make sure I get everything out here that I wanna say. This is just 20 rows of knitting. There's cast on, 20 rows, and a bind off, and we use super bulky yarn for this, and size 15 needles. Now the yarn that I used is Lion Brand Wool Ease Thick and Quick, and this is widely available at craft stores and fabric stores, at least here in the US, and it's, uh, it ends up being a really good value. Um, this, at the craft store near my home, was $8 and I had a 40% off coupon, which made it a really inexpensive Christmas gift. And if you have purchased an interchangeable needle set, like these are my Addy Clicks, and you haven't had a chance to use your size 15 needles, here is your chance. Uh, you wanna use 15 needles with a 24 inch or 32 inch cord to fit all the stitches. Um, I think that's everything I wanted to say about the cowl, except for the other way that you can wear it, which is to keep your ears warm. It'd make a great holiday gift and it's quick to knit. Next up, we're going to talk about the cast on and getting good tension between the knit and purl stitches. If you've got your pattern and your yarn and your needles, we're ready to get started with the cast on. And in this pattern, we cast on 90 stitches, and we're gonna talk about the breakdown of that here in just a moment. But uh, I recommend that you do the long tail cast on, and I'll give you a link here to a slow version of the, a, a slow video of the long tail cast on. Uh, but when you do the long tail cast on, you have to leave a long tail to be able to do that. And we're casting on so many stitches that I want to review how to know you have enough yarn for a long tail cast on. So um, here are my needles and here's my yarn. I'm going to leave myself about a six inch tail and start wrapping the needle like this. And each one of these wraps is enough for one stitch cast on. So what I'll do is uh, wrap the needle 30 times. And I wasn't counting, but I know I'm not up to 30 and then triple that and make my slip knot right there so that I have enough stitches, enough yarn for 90 stitches. It will always be too much yarn when you use this method, but it's much easier to waste a foot of yarn or something rather than doing a long uh, or a lot of stitches cast on over and over again. Okay, let's go ahead and take a look at the finished cowl. Here we are, and you can see the half twist in this. The basket weave is actually easier to see in this color than it is on the, the gray one that I was wearing. And the pattern is uh, just knitting and purling to make the basket weave pattern, and it's uh, four knits and then four purls over and over again, and then after five rows, we switch and all the knits are purls and the purls are knits, and that's how this has worked. And let me get this. I've worked a couple of rows on this one. At the very beginning, the, fir the first 
five stitches are all knit on these first few rows. And then after that, we go into four purls, four knits, four purls, four knits, until we get to the very end, and then these last four stitches are all purled. The reason for that is because we're going to put a seam in this, and the seam's going to eat up a stitch on each end, and we want the basket weave to you know, be seamless looking, even though there's a seam in it, so we have a multiple of four plus two extra stitches to be eaten up in the seam. If that was confusing, don't worry, just follow the pattern. It's all there. Oh, let me say one more thing. The pattern is a 10 row repeat, so you'll work five, first five rows, the next five rows, and then you work the first five rows and the next five rows again. So it's, uh, you repeat the 10 row repeat twice to get the whole 20 rows of the scarf. Okay, let's talk a little bit about getting good tension between knit and purl stitches. I'm going to go through these five knit stitches. And if you aren't used to knitting with these giant needles, which I'm, I don't do very often, it's a little bit cumbersome at first. So I knit my first five stitches and I'm ready to go into a purl stitch. So I pull my yarn forward between the two needles to work a purl stitch. And if you're going to have tension issues with, um, with the basket weave, it's going to be here. It's going to be when you're yarning forward and yarning back between the knit and purl stitches. And that's because just the act of yarning forward creates a drag. And, and then this last knit stitch can end up being kind of loose and goofy, or the next purl stitch can be loose or goofy, or both of them. So I'm going to pull the yarn forward between the two needles, and then take my index finger and push the bottom of that knot forward to make this strand come as close to this purl stitch as possible in the front, and thereby eliminate some of that drag. And I just used a lot of words to explain that. It's a quick action. I'll show you again. This time I'm going from purl to knit, and I usually find when I yarn back to purl, I don't have to push on it. There's enough strength there in the tug that it does not create a drag. Here I'm going to go from knit to purl again. Yarn forward to work the purl. Take my index finger and push that knot forward to get good tension on the next stitch. It's a good habit to get into when you're uh, switching back and forth between knitting and purling, but I found that with these giant needles and this big thick yarn, it's especially important. Yarn forward, push that knot, and go into the purl stitches. Okay, that will get you through the whole pattern repeat. Just keep track of your rows um, and knit for 20 rows and do the bind off. And next up, we're going to talk about uh, steam blocking the piece and seaming it. If you've finished working your 20 rows and you've bound off, you're ready to seam the Mobius and put the half twist into it. Let's go ahead and take a look. Here I am with the scarf. I have it folded like this. And to get the Mobius twist, all I'm going to do is take one side and flip it over. And you'll see that we have the half twist over here. And it's flat here so we can seam it. And the basket weave lines up perfectly, which is on purpose. I wanted it to line up perfectly. Now when we're seaming this, we're going to use the mattress stitch. And uh, I'll give you a link here to my video on just regular mattress stitch, which is shown in stockinette. What's a little bit different about this one is that we have both knit and purl stitches to seam together. And it's not difficult, but I do want you to watch for a few things to make sure everything lines up properly. Now remember, the basket weave is all four stitch squares across. Um, except for the first and last. And that's because the seam is going to absorb one stitch on each side, and once the seam's finished, the, the basket weave will look perfect. So when you're seaming this, you want to look at the ladders between the knit and purl stitches, 
not the knit and purl stitches, the first and second column of stitches. There's the first column. It's a row of V's going up, and then here's the second column. We're going to be mattress stitching with these ladders between the stitches over here. And it's the same thing on um, the purl side. We're going to grab two bumps going up like this. Now, what's important is that we all you don't stray one way or the other. You always stay between the first and second column of stitches. And then we have these awesome guidelines in basket weave, these horizontal lines where um, the stitches change, and you can have you can make sure that these all line up as well. And that will make that always keeps you on track and it'll always um, you know exactly where you are in the seam all the time. Now you need a tapestry needle for this, and we'll thread this super bulky yarn onto the tapestry needle. Oh, and if you followed the pattern, you left a couple feet of tail after you bound off because you can use that to seam, which is perfect. So my yarn is coming from over here. I'm going to jump over here and just poke through the very bottom over here between the first and second column of stitches. And now the two halves are connected. I'll jump back over here and grab two bumps on the back of the work. It's just over from the very edge, and that's, it's the equivalent as between the first two column of stitches. Go over here and grab the very bottom two ladders that I see between the, the stitches. Jump back over here, grab a couple of ladders. Over here, grab a couple of ladders. Over here, grab a couple of ladders. Now I'm very, um, I'm at the very end of this section of basket weave over here, and I am over here too. So things are gonna line up, and I haven't pulled anything tightly yet, and if you've watched my videos before, there are a couple reasons I don't pull things tightly. One is that I love this magic moment. Doesn't that look great? I love seeing it all come together at once. The other reason is that if you leave it loose, it's easy to see where you came your last stitch came out of because I'm going to go into that same spot and grab two ladders and jump over here and go into that same spot and grab two ladders. And if it's loose, it's easy to see where you came out of last time. If you haven't used bulky yarn before, you're in for a treat because it's amazing how quickly things go. Okay, there's a second box done, all tightened up. I'll just go ahead and finish seaming this. And if, when you pull it tightly, it doesn't quite look right. I'm just going to grab one ladder over here and one ladder over here to make sure that this lines up perfectly. No harm done. Yep, we got that. After you pull it, you, you'll know right away if it's lining up or not. If it's not lining up, just pull that, that last stitch out and do it again. No big deal. I'm going to grab one over here and two over here, which is going to line me up just right. Making adjustments like that is a good thing to do as you go along. That looks good. Now I want to really even out this edge on top of here. My yarn's coming from over here. I'm going to take my tapestry needle and in the bind off row, I'm going to go under both legs of the last, the, the corner stitch on this side, and then go back down into the hole, <coughs> excuse me, that this yarn came out of. When I do that, I create another V, this is the V I just created, that makes everything blend together across the top of this work. And our, se our seam looks good. I'll apply some steam to this whole thing. I'll use a steam iron without pressing down and just um, bursts of steam and then pat it out while it's still kind of warm and wet and this will look perfect. And that's it. Good luck. Thank <laughs> you.